Hello everyone and welcome to my channel where I talk about bioinformatics and computational biology and show how I do some things. If you like these videos, please consider subscribing. In this video, I will show you how we log on to and use a supercomputer. A high performance computer or a supercomputer is usually a large collection of computing units, CPUs or GPUs that are connected to each other. Thus, supercomputers are sometimes referred to as clusters. You can actually build your own cluster at home by connecting computers together. I once did it with three Raspberry Pis. It's very easy, but of course very limited in power. I mean, in, in the end, it is a Raspberry Pi. <laughs> there are of course many different types of supercomputer architectures, but we won't get into that. It's not the purpose of this video. Unlike what sometimes is portrayed in movies, supercomputers do not look like this. They look like this. Yep, a command line interface, which is in my view, the most efficient way to use a computer. There are however options to use a GUI, a graphical user interface on a supercomputer, but I never tried it and not sure what I would do with it. A supercomputer is not designed to look cool. It is designed to be fast and efficient at number crunching, uber number crunching. Most computations that are run on an HPC, a high performance computer, can run on a local computer. In fact, it is the preferred way that we first code and test our setup on our local computer, which would be obviously massively scaled down and slow. And once we get a satisfied setup, then we scale it up and run it on an HPC. We do this so we won't waste computer resources nor have to wait for long queues. You will see what I mean later on. HPCs are shared. You can't hog the entire thing for yourself. You can't use an entire supercomputer just for yourself. It doesn't work this way. And if you try, the HPC managing team will be quite pissed off at you. Which brings me to my disclosure. This video is not meant to teach you everything about using an HPC. HPCs are highly sophisticated equipment that are custom made when they are built. So learning how to use one HPC doesn't mean you can use all HPCs. Each one has a different setup, architecture, environment, and rules and regulations. It is not like learning to use Windows and then you can use all Windows computers. No, here each HPC is unique. You need to understand the specific HPC that you are using and its specific architecture. So you have to sit down with the managing team and learn. This video is meant to give you just an introduction on how we use HPCs in general. So when you do sit down with your managing team, you at least understand what they're talking about. What is Slurm? What is PBS? What is a job submission? What is a queue, etc. So let's start. So the first thing you should understand is that we do not connect to supercomputers or HPCs uh, by wire. Not like what you see sometimes in movies. No, we connect through the network. But for security reasons, you usually have to connect through the university network, which means you have to be present connected to the university network geographically and then be able to access the supercomputer. Of course, this is a little bit inconvenient because sometimes you want to connect to the supercomputer from home. So the way around this is to set up, is to go to your university network uh, managers and set up a VPN. So they will give you credentials, username and password, and of course the university IP that will allow you to connect to the university through VPN and you become as if you are inside the university, then you will be able to connect to the supercomputer. One method I use, which at least works with me because I'm on a Linux, uh, is open connect. You have to say sudo open connect and then your university uh, IP or web link or whatever, they, they will give you this information. And obviously, when you execute this command, it, you will be prompted for a username and password, sometimes two factor authentication, depends on the setup of your university. Then you will be connected through VPN. Once you connect the VPN, then you can SSH into your supercomputer. And SSH works by typing SSH, your username at your high performance computer. 
When you first log on to the supercomputer, you will land into your home directory. As you can see here, this is my home directory and it has one script called search.py. You do not perform computation on your home directory. You will be assigned a different directory specifically for computation. For example, here I am changing my directory uh, to ibex, scratch, and my username. And now I am in the computing directory. The difference is that the computing directory is usually a different file system specifically designed for um, high performance computing. Uh, your home directory isn't designed for that. Your home directory is designed for you to store your scripts, uh, your data, uh, uh, things you want to download, upload, and so on. But your computing directory is where you put all your scripts and your material databases and so on, and then submit them to the supercomputer for it to perform the computation. But before we start, we have to talk about modules. And modules are a way for a supercomputer to give you varieties instead of having to install things. Because remember, you are not the administrator of the supercomputer, so you cannot install things at the supercomputer. So here, for example, you can write module avail to see all the modules that are available. For example, you can see uh, a Python 2.7, 3.6, 3.7, 3 3.8. It depends which Python you want, you can load it. So here, I'm showing you that uh, the default Python is um, uh, 3.6.1. And then when I load, uh, I say module load Python slash 3.8.1, it will load uh, that Python. And, and now you can see that the version has changed. So it's very important for us to understand this concept of modules so we understand how and what type of variety um, of programs that we can use in that uh, supercomputer. Of course, if you want, for example, to use Python, I, for example, almost all my scripts are Python, you can use Conda. And with Conda, uh, you're developing an environment so you can install anything you want in it. And of course, this is very convenient because if you install things, if different versions or different versions are, are not um, working together, you can just delete it and start again. So you can see here, I'm saying Conda create new uh, test env. And this is the name of my environment. Now we have to activate that environment in order to install Python libraries. And then we can write conda install. And for this demonstration, I'm just going to install NumPy because I have two scripts to show you and one of them uses NumPy. So there is no need to install a lot of libraries because again, it's the, it's the same concept. Now, of course I can continue using the environment, but I prefer to deactivate it. Because remember, we are not going to perform the computation on this terminal. And this is the defining difference between using a local computer and a supercomputer. In a local computer, you would execute your script by saying python test.py. And then your script works. In a supercomputer, you have to submit your script to the supercomputer. You are connected to the supercomputer, but you are not connected to the computing nodes. So if you execute your script right now, it will work most likely exactly the way it works on your lo local computer. It won't be fast, it won't be um, efficient, no. It's, it's just going to be normal. That's because you're not using a computing node. For you to perform a computation, you have to submit your script to the supercomputer. And the supercomputer will put you on a queue because remember, the HPC is shared. But the question is, how do you submit a script to the supercomputer? How do, you, how do you send it to be computed? And here is when we talk about the job scheduler. We have two types of job schedulers, PBS and Slurm. So here I'm just opening a Tmux session um, and I'm going to divide the terminal so you can see um, how, how the two um, scripts are related. On the left, I'm going to write a PBS job uh, script and on the right, I'm going to write a Slurm um, script. 
The first thing we have to write is a shebang. Now, to be honest, I'm not sure if it's needed or not. I, I always see it in these scripts. And to be honest, I, I, never, I didn't really have the time to test whether it will work with it or work without it because I don't want to wait on a queue just to find out if this line works or not. As long as it works when it's there, I keep it. So the first thing you have to write is a shebang, which is um, uh, hash, uh, uh, hash um, exclamation mark, slash bin, slash bash. The tags or the headings for PBS are um, uh, comment PBS, and for slam it's going to be comment S batch. So here you can see in PBS, we say um, comment PBS dash capital N, and then the name of your job. In this case, the, our job that we are submitting is called test. And it's very important because when you look at the queue, you want to see which job you have. You can submit several jobs, you want to know which one is which. The equivalent that for Slurm is going to be comment s batch dash dash job dash name equals test. Then we have to um, decide which queue to use. In PBS, we say comment PBS dash Q thin. That's because the particular supercomputer that I've registered at, which is Aziz Supercomputer from King Abdulaziz University, uh, uses PBS and it has several queues. One of them is thin. Remember, for your particular supercomputer, you will have different queues. You have to assign your specific queue. Some queues would be for debugging, some queues are for large computations, some queues are for um, a large number of CPUs, for example, or large number of memory, but less, less CPUs. It depends on your supercomputer architecture. So you have to decide which queue your job fits in. The equivalent that for Slurm is going to be comment as batch, dash dash partition equals batch. And as you can see here, it's a very clear example because the Slurm script works at a different supercomputer than the PBS script. So the Slurm script is actually going to be submitted to the IBEX supercomputer, which uses Slurm, and obviously it has different queues. And here you can see the queue is called batch. Then we want to decide how long is our script going to compute? We can't just send a script to the supercomputer and tell the supercomputer, deal with it. No, you, we have to assign how long it will be computed for. And this is very important. Again, all of this will be figured out when you are testing your system locally. You understand, for example, if you have a, uh, a, a simulation, how long does the simulation take? Maybe the simulation takes four hours. So of course, you're not going to give it four hours because it might cut just before it ends. You might give it six hours, you know? Uh, but you're not going to you're not going to give it 24 hours. Uh, the reason for this is that when you assign the correct time, the CPU time for your computation, you will move through the queue faster. For example, if you have a script that takes three minutes to run, and you send uh, uh, the script to the supercomputer assigning it 24 hours it will wait until there's a slot for a 24 hour computation to go through. That is inefficient because you're wasting your time. The, th the computer thinks you need 24 hours while in reality it's only going to take three minutes. So why wait until there's enough empty uh, nodes for a 24 hour compute uh, uh, computation? What you would do is write three minutes, four minutes or five minutes uh, and when the job schedule sees that it's only five minutes, it's only a quick computation, it will bump you up to the front of the line. The, the job scheduler is called job scheduler because it's efficient. It tries to take the proper decisions to make the computer run efficiently, which means if there are people that are uh, requesting 24 hour computations, why make them go first spend 24 hours computing and then make the others that just want two or three minute computations to wait for 24 hours until the node is empty. No, bump these people quickly, make them perform their uh, quick computation, send the results and then um, run the slow 
comp uh, computation. So why I'm telling you this? I'm telling you this to justify and try to explain to you why it is important to assign the correct time for the computation. If you don't assign the correct time for the computation, you will waste your time. So of course, in PBS, you would assign the time by writing comment PBS dash L wall time equals hours, minutes, seconds. And the equivalent that in Slurm is going to be comment S batch uh, dash dash time equals hours, minutes, seconds. Then, of course, you need to assign the amount of CPUs that you want, the amount of nodes and CPUs that you're requesting. Again, this is very much dependent on your particular computation. I can't just give you a number. You have to understand the type of computation you're, you're performing. You cannot just copy and paste, okay? You have to understand this computation, how many CPUs does it need? How many nodes does it need? And the way supercomputers work is that you usually have a node that is comp comprised of several CPUs. So for example, you might have one node and within one node, you have 24 CPUs. So if you request one node, you have up to 24 CPUs at your disposal. You might want one node with only four CPUs and maybe segment the others, or you might want one node and all the CPUs. Again, it's very much dependent on your particular computation. In my case, I'm saying I need one node and four CPUs. I don't need four CPUs for the demonstration. I'm just giving you a number so you can understand what they mean. In PBS, we would say comment PBS dash L select equals one for node, then uh, colon N CPUs equals four for four CPUs of one node. Of course, I can request two nodes and each node would have four CPUs. The equivalent in Slurm is going to be S batch uh, dash dash mem equals zero. What does this mean? So in, in the Slurm script, I am uh, requesting a specific memory, memory as in RAM. Remember sometimes, and this is going to be in one of the demonstrations I'm going to show you now. Sometimes you have such a large data set, for example, for machine learning, you have a large data set that you need to load into RAM and you cannot load it in your local computer because you only have three gigabytes. But the supercomputer can give you up to, for example, 500 gigabytes of RAM. So you would request that. You can request 100 megabytes, 100 gigabytes, or write zero to request all that is available. In my case, I'm going to request all that is available. But then you have to say comment s batch dash dash nodes equals one. So I'm requesting one node and then uh, comment s batch uh, dash dash n tasks uh, equals four for four CPUs of a node. So I'm requesting one node with four CPUs. Sometimes you might not want CPUs, you might want GPUs. Again, it's very much dependent on the type of computer that you've registered at. If it has GPUs, if it has uh, only CPUs or only GPUs or a mixture, it depends. But one way you can request GPUs is to write S, uh, um, comment S batch dash dash G res equals four. So I'm requesting four GPUs and then S batch dash dash constraint equals uh, V100. So what I'm requesting is the type of GPU that is V100, a Tesla. I'm not going to run that because my script demonstration does not require GPUs, but this is just the code to show you that if you want to request GPUs for G machine learning, for example, uh, this is how to do it. But remember again, your particular a uh, high performance computer might have slightly different uh, tweaks because remember they are custom made. So what I'm writing for you right now might be different than what you need to write. You have to understand your particular high performance computer. Then there is something very important because when you submit your script to a supercomputer, you have to tell it where you are. So you have to say, you have to tell the supercomputer to change directory back to where your local directory is. So this command cd uh, slurm submit dir tells the supercomputer to perform the computation where you are locally at, where you've submitted the position where you have submitted the uh, job schedule, uh, the, the job script from. 
uh, sometimes you might end up with data in your home directory on other directories and so on. you don't want that you want them in one place so it's just standard that you say uh, change the directory back to where i am and of course the equivalent that in pbs is cd pbs o work dir in pbs we said um, we want the output and the error files to be connected together to be combined together when we said uh, command uh, uh, comment pbs uh, dash j, small j uh, oe that means combine the output and the error files together because sometimes you you might want to separate the output file from the error file uh, so you can see what output and uh, what errors you've got in slurm if you do not specify what is your output and what is your error files by default it combines them i prefer to work this way i prefer to see the the full terminal output after that you write your script if you want to write a bash script or call a python script for example say python your script and so on this is where you would write it if you want to load a module you would load a module then uh, uh, activate an environment then um, run your python script whatever you have to do to make the script work this is where you write it here so in our example the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run a a python script okay but instead of loading a module and activating the environment and deactivate running the script and deactivating the environment and so on i'm just going to call the python immediately so i'm going to say um, home my username conda ends my ends remember the one the one that we've we've installed numpy and in, the test env binary and the python so i want to use that python that is you know that is connected to that um, environment and call my uh, my script so let's look at the first demonstration the tensor.py script and the tensor.py script is very simple it's just building a tensor a large tensor and the tensor's constituents is just values between 0 and 1 but this tensor is very large it's 1000 by 1000 by 1000 okay it's extremely large and the script basically just uh, builds this tensor and prints its shape this tensor does not run on my local computer i have a local computer a macbook pro uh, 2011 if i'm not mistaken um i i didn't buy it i uh, someone gave it to me uh, so it's it's not really a powerful computer it only has three gigabytes of uh, ram but when we run this script you can see that it cannot run it gives you a memory error okay so this demonstrates to you that this script does not work on my local computer now let's go and submit it to the supercomputer before we submit a job let's look at how do we know that we've submitted the job and in slurm you say sq and in pbs you say qstat all right so basically it's uh, uh, slurm q uh, sq uh, to v to see everyone's q if you just say sq you see everyone who has who has uh, jobs that are submitted the ones that are working the ones that are hold that are the ones that are being queued and so on and if you say uh, qstat is the same command but for pbs okay so if you say qstat you see everyone's submitted uh, jobs of course if you don't want to search through everyone's if you, if you if you don't want to search for your uh, submission out of all the ones that have been submitted currently you can just say sq for uh, so for slam is going to be sq dash u for user and then your username and you can see here that i don't have any jobs submitted so my queue is empty now let us submit the job script to the supercomputer and to submit in slurm you say s batch and then the script name and now when we look at the queue you can see you can see here the job id is 11573637 the partition or the queue that specific uh, uh, type of queue that we've submitted to is called batch the name of my job my username my state and the time that has elapsed is currently being being run so five seconds has elapsed and the number of nodes that i'm using up and the name of the node 
Of, of course, if I'm using two nodes, there'll be two names under the node list. Once you check your queue and, you see, and, you, and your job disappears, it means it has completed. And when you check your directory, you will find a slurm uh, dash the job ID. Let's open it, let's see what's inside it. And you can see the script has been uh, executed to completion, which means the script built the tensor successfully without any errors and printed the tensor shape. This shows you that I was able to utilize more than seven gigabytes of RAM, which I couldn't have utilized in my computer because I don't have this amount of RAM, but the supercomputer does. Now, other commands you might use is qdel for PBS or scancel for slurm and the job ID. So sometimes, for example, you might submit a job by accident. Or for example, you might submit a job uh, and you decide you want to cancel it uh, for whatever. You don't want to wait 24 hours until it goes to completion and returns and you know there's a, a going to be an error. Uh, no, you can just cancel it. So you say S cancel and the job ID. Uh, and the same thing with PBS, you say uh, QDEL and the job ID. Now let's talk about something else that we can utilize the supercomputer with. And that is an array. Now I've showed you the first example, which is utilizing a lot of memory, okay? There are obviously other examples where you can combine CPUs together and uh, like, uh, for example, like, like MPI, combine them so you can perform faster computations. And the third way is to repeat your script many times, which we call an array. And you can see here in Slurm, if we want to utilize an array, we say, comment s batch dash dash array equals one two four one dash four what this basically means is that i want to repeat the execution of my script four times what will happen is that when i send this job to the supercomputer it's not going to perform one computation it's not going to request one node it's going to request four nodes which means that it will effectively run my script, the same script at four different nodes at the same time. The same thing you can say in PBS, you can write comment PBS dot capital J one to four. Why would we need to repeat our script? Well, sometimes you run Monte Carlo simulations and Monte Carlo simulations, every time you run them because they utilize randomness, Every time you run them, it gives you a different output. And sometimes you want to collect these outputs in order to make a meaningful result. So now let's look at the coin.py script. The coin.py script, as you can see here, is a very simple script. And the, the only thing that it does is that it calculates the probability of you getting ahead after you've flipped a coin, virtually flipped a coin for a million times. Okay, so you can see here, I have a million trials. I flipped a coin a million times. And what is the probability of getting heads? Obviously, we know the probability is going to be 0 0.5, but that's not going to be exactly 0 0.5 because this is probability, okay? So every time we execute this script, it performs 1 million trials and outputs the probability. So sometimes it's going to be 0 0.51, 0 0.49, 0 0.5001, and so on. Every time it's going to output a different result. Now, when we submit this script to the supercomputer, it will execute the script four times because I've requested four nodes. So you can see here, my job ID is 11573639 underscore four, which means this job IT is being repeated four times. And when it is done, you can see that I have four outputs. And if I open each of these files, you can see that the output is different. So in the end, this is a small demo on how we use supercomputers. Anyway, I hope you found this demonstration useful. Thank you for watching.